Can inversion tables help your scoliosis? When it comes to spinal conditions or any kind of spinal therapy or any condition of the spine like scoliosis, a lot of people think about aversion tables because aversion tables have been around for a long time. And so there's this inherent thought about maybe inversion tables could help somebody with scoliosis. So first of all, what, what's an aversion table? An aversion table is a table that tries to um, invert your body, normally strapping you down by either your ankles or your legs, and it tries to inverse the pressure of gravity on your, system, on your system or your spine and using the weight of your body to help traction or decompress the, the spine in particular. Aversion tables can be used for lots of things, um, but they're mostly used for to help try to reduce low back pain. That's the most common use of uh, inversion tables is to help deal with low back pain. But most importantly is the reason the way they do that and the way, the way they act on the spine is by inversing the gravitational forces on the spine to reduce compression. And they kind of slowly or stretch the spine out. The, one of the limitations of, of inversion tables is that they're limited to how they apply the force. Meaning as you just invert somebody and we use the gra gravity to, in, to decompress the spine, most of the decompression is occurring in the lumbar spine primarily. As you go up the spine, because the body weighs less as you go higher and higher, higher up, meaning as you invert it, it creates a less force in those areas. So the maximum decompression occurs at the lower lumbar of the spine. When we think of scoliosis, scoliosis is more than just compression, unfortunately. Scoliosis is a abnormal sideways curvature of the spine of 10 degrees or greater, and then there's always a rotation. So scoliosis by itself is not just a, a two-dimensional or one force causing compression of the spine. There is some compression, but it's normally a result of first the rotation and the bending. So the compression is a secondary thing that tends to happen, and there can be compression of the spine and muscles and nerves, which can lead to some low back pain symptoms. And that's the reason why I think people would associate, well, maybe an inversion table could possibly help them. Scoliosis can be treated many different ways. Um, traditionally, the approaches are very limited in terms of how they use proactive treatment to try to stabilize the scoliosis before it worsens. Meaning, traditional treatment typically has a watch and wait approach. They use uh, bracing, trying to slow down the progression, and then if the curve becomes big enough, all the thing else they offer is surgery in the spine where they put rods and screws to try to reduce the curve and stop progression. Proactive treatments looking at trying to slow down, uh, slow down the progression, but also in reduce some of the curvature that's already developed and actually reduce what's causing the curve to actually progress over time can be many different things. You know, chiropractic care to be, comes to people's mind that they can try to impact the spine structurally using chiropractic care. They use spinal exercises, scoliosis specific exercises, core strengthening. There's a lot of things people can try to use to try to help um, stop scoliosis from progressing over time. And that's the reason why inversion tables comes into people's minds because they think if I can just invert, I can proactively or conservatively try to deal with my scoliosis so I don't have to face the consequences of traditional treatment, which end, ends up having people to have spinal fusion and surgery. So if that's the case, you know, inversion of the sp inversion, why won't just decompression help? Well, decompression can help scoliosis primarily, I believe, with pain relief. If a person's experiencing some low back pain, it can definitely improve or help them with some low back pain because it's causing some decompression. But the pain relief is going to be very temporary because since it's not making a structural correction in that person's spine, it's not reducing the size of curve, it's not reducing the size of derotation, it's not causing any derotation, it's not really changing the causation of what's leading to their back pain. So therefore, it's very temporary relief, but it could be some, which is obviously better than nothing. However, inversion tables are not shown to have any type of uh, reduction in the scoliosis in terms of size, and they also show to have no impact on progression. So therefore, you can't say scoliosis or inversion tables can be cured. Um, uh, it can be, uh, scoliosis can be cured from inversion tables. There's, there's no way you can say that. In fact, the truth is there's no real cure for scoliosis. You're just finding the right treatment protocol to help manage and reduce the curve so it has a less impact on your body. And because it can't reduce the structure, the benefits that it's having are just like indirect benefits. Like I said, with pain relief, maybe some muscle spasm, it can help you feel better, help you feel a little longer, but these things are gonna quickly return because it's not making a structural change. When it comes to, when it comes to inversion tables, there are, the benefits are only really therapeutic. 
they are not structural. To get structural changes, you have to treat the scoliosis with a multimodal approach, and you can't just use elongation or decompression like an inversion table that primarily only focuses mostly on lumbar spines. You have to be able to decompress the spine throughout the entire length of the spine, but you also have to be able to derotate it and unbend it. You need all three motions to provide the best outcome for a structural result. And here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, that's what we do. We actually provide therapeutic uh, treatments, um, tractions, and also decompression modalities that actually address all three components so you can have the very best results to actually reduce your scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.